Hello friends, in this course we will study about autoencoders and we will see how to implement them in a very popular deep learning framework called Keras. We will start with the basic autoencoders and how to implement that and then gradually we will move on to more complex autoencoder architectures and then we will see some uh, practical uh, autoencoder model examples. So let's first understand what is autoencoder. So autoencoder is a data compression technique. So it, this architecture consists mainly of two parts. The first part is the encoder and the second part is decoder. And this middle layer, this contains the compressed representation. And how does this contain a compressed representation is that if you have a data in let's say thousand dimension, then we will have different layers in a neural network. So the first layer will accept these 1000 inputs. So we can have a thousand node here corresponding to input. And then in the next layer, let's say we have 800 nodes. And these are connected. And then we have, let's say, 400 nodes. And uh, in supervised learning, we feed input to the network and also the labeled output. So the network with the help of these many uh, nodes in between multiple layers tries to figure out uh, the, a complex function and uh, so that it can represent these values. So in this case, in case of auto autoencoders, there are some layers, then this is the middle layer, and then this decodes the value. So here, whatever is the input, the same is the output. So it's a supervised learning setting you can see. We are giving the input. We are not explicitly giving the output, but the input is same as output. So the job is of this network is to recreate the output but the constraint is that we have kept let's say 1000 nodes here, 800 nodes here and 400 nodes here and then again 800 and then 1000 so that the input or dimension matches the output. So the network's job is to minimize the loss function and our loss function will be comparing the input and the generated output. So this difference should be minimum. And the job of any network is to minimize that loss. So, uh, but in the middle we have just four dim 400 dimensional value. So in essence, we, if we provide many examples, then the network will learn how to recreate the output input. And if we pick the output of this layer, then it will uh, kind of represent this input data because initially uh, the network uh, will pick some features of the input and discard some features of the in input. Uh, but ultimately, by minimizing these loss functions where the input is same as output, it will pick the most important things present in this input. That is, it will capture the main content of the input and ignore some variational contents like noise or some less important information. So if we, after it's sufficiently trained and the loss function has sufficiently converged, then we can ignore this decoder part and we will take this encoder part. So what this encoder will do, whenever we give a data of 100 dimension, it will return a data of 400 dimension, which will essentially consist of almost same information. Some information will definitely be lost, but it will essentially contain most of the information. And let's say we want to transmit the data, then we can transmit this just 400 dimensional data and somebody else 
who receives it over a network can use this train decoder and uh, this decoder will take 400 dimensional input and it will return a thousand dimensional output so that person can use this 400 dimensional feed it to this decoder and get back a thousand dimensional data so you see that we have we are representing a thousand dimensional data into a 400 dimensional data so that's why it can be used as a data compression technique so what can be the simplest uh, auto encoder so we will have one fully connected layer in neural network and then let's say it has thousand dimension and then in the next layer we have let's say 200 dimension so this is the second layer and in the third layer we have again thousand dimension so this is the simplest auto encoder that we can think of and not necessarily simplest in terms of dimension but uh, the number of layers so one and we also call this layer bottleneck layer because you see in a bottle if you have a bottle like this this neck is the slimmest part of the bottle so in this network this layer is the slimmest part so that's why it's called bottleneck layer so this is a simple uh, auto encoder then we can have uh, many more layers like as i said in earlier example 1000 900 800 gradually up to let's say 100 and then reconstruct the decoder so this is slightly more complex but still using fully connected feed forward network we can further have this in convolutional network so we have input image let's say in this case the input will be an image then we will have the initial convolutional layer uh, and we represent it like this height width and the number of channels so we will have a few convolutional layers and some then some pooling layers which will shrink it to a smaller convolutional layer and keep shrinking so this will be bottleneck and this will this part will form the encoder part and then we will reverse the architecture and recreate the output image from this input image so that will be auto encoder in convolutional neural network setting now let's see some of the model examples of auto encoder one that is simple auto encoder uh, based on fully connected layer then sparse auto encoder then deep fully connected so just deep deeper version of this first one so here this is the simplest neural network with uh, three layers then this is the deep version of that deep means there is depth in this network because of multiple layers and then deep convolutional auto encoder so this next example that i gave i kept representing the image in a smaller and a smaller image and then try to recreate that image and then you see that uh, this network learns the essence of the data the main com content of the data and ignores the insignificant part or variations which are less important in recreating the output so quite naturally it will ignore the noise and then we will see a uh, sequence to sequence auto encoder in further videos and then we will see variational auto encoders so in the next video we will see uh, how to implement a simple auto encoder with just three layers using keras so see you in the next video thank you